God bless you. So, we're going to go into Matthew. We're going to go into chapter 11. And we're going to do a little study. So, if you'd like to open to Matthew chapter 11. And we're going to go to verse 28 of chapter 11. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is telling you right here what to do. To learn from me. Learn from Jesus. He is telling you who to learn from. His example is here in the four Gospels. The life he led is in the four Gospels. All the things he did are in these four Gospels. Open your Bibles and read them every day. Get to know what Jesus did that you learn from him. Don't decide what you like to hear as truth. Don't let anyone tell you what you want to hear. Test everyone, even me, with these words in the Bible. Make sure that what anyone says is scriptural. If it can be proven false, then what is it? Exactly. The Bible consistently tells you the same thing again and again. Old Testament to New Testament. They all speak of the same things. So learn your Bible. Learn from Jesus and his example. For take his yoke and learn from him. For his burden is light. Learn from Jesus Christ and all he did. This is the template. This is the example. A man of love and devotion. Selfless and humble. Lowly of heart. Loving and kind. Selfless. This was a man full of compassion and peace. Look at who you learn from. Jesus, learn from me, he says. So learn from him. I can only show you the scriptures. It's up to you to learn from them. I pray this will help you in your studies, in your guidance, as you grow in your faith and grow in your understanding. So learn from Jesus. And what did he tell everyone when he came back? Shall we find out? For he overcame, didn't he? So let's look at Matthew 28. We're going to go to verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So he has complete authority on everything. Name above all names. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit baptizing them so he wants his bat them baptized he doesn't say don't baptize them he says baptize them and teaching them to observe all the things that i have commanded you so he wants us to know all the things that he commands to follow them and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age amen so and that's from one book that's matthew what do we learn when we see it from Mark? So next we go to Mark. And it's chapter 16. And we're going to go from verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
So you, you're spreading the word to everyone. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Not might be, could be, possibly. He who is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now he's not telling you to go and buy yourself a bottle of something you shouldn't that's completely dangerous and toxic and then drink it and say, ta-da! That's not what he means. If you accidentally take something you shouldn't, God is there. Now, there is, I cannot remember the name of this book, but there was a missionary. Now, if I remember correctly, he was in the Amazon. And he went there to teach Jesus to them, to teach them about the Bible. And he had a translator with him through the journey in the Amazon. Now, I've heard him spoken of by about three different preachers so I'll have to see if I can find this book now he went with them and they were taking him to their village and on I think it was like he'd been with them about a week from what I can remember and the people started to say okay we believe you're from God and he was like hmm and they went we've been poisoning your food for seven days and you haven't died we're 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 like listening and they took, and they finally got to the village. Now, can you imagine? You know, someone said, "Yeah, I've been poisoning you. I've been poisoning you for a while. How come you're not dead?" Can you imagine? I think that would be a bit of a you know hair on end. But I tell you what, that shows you God's with you. Now he got to their village, and this man doesn't speak their language in the Amazon. And when they got there, it turned out. Someone had died in the village. I think it was a little girl. And they were all very grieved. And, and they took him to where the little girl was. And he went to pray. And all of a sudden he said he started to pray. But he didn't know what came upon him. But he felt the spirit flow through him. And he started to pray in tongues. Now the little woke girl eventually woke up. And she was thirsty. Now, all the people were completely shocked, and so was the translator. Now, would you like to know why? Everyone said, you spoke and praised God in our language perfectly. We understood every word you said. That village came to God that day. Get in your Bibles. Learn the word. Put your faith in the Lord. He's there for all of you. Now, what do we learn in Luke? Now, where are we? So, if we come to Luke 24. Now, and we'll go from 44 and go, go down. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. He opens our eyes. For this book, when we live in the world, is gobbledygook. It can be very confusing. But when you give up the self and leave it at the cross, and pick up your cross and follow Jesus and learn from him, he will open your understanding. And then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Remember that. All these things had to happen, and they did. He overcame death. And as we continue, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things behold I send the promise of my father upon you 
but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Do you remember that power as the Holy Spirit came upon them, didn't it? That's in Acts. You learn about that. Now, what did he just say? That repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Now, what's remission? Now, I don't know if you've ever had cancer. And if you have, you'll understand what it is to be in remission. Oh, the tumour is shrinking. Ah, oh, it is no longer spreading. Ah, things are improving. Remission of sins. Get into remission. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached. It doesn't say it shouldn't be. It should be. Test all your preachers, even me. Has to be what's in the Bible. Can't be opinion. Can't be, well, I think it means this. Who's to say that? What does it directly say? And look at that. And ask God to reveal it to you. For it is all here. And we should be taking these words to heart. Listening. For if we don't listen, how are we going to grow? We will be stunted. So, we should learn from Jesus. We should be forgiving one another, loving one another. The two most important commandments, to love God above all things, to put him first, to love him with all our heart, all our mind and all our strength. And the second is like it, to love our neighbor as ourself, to do unto others as we would do unto ourselves, to follow and learn from Jesus to obey his commands, to be baptized. And this command I give you to love one another as I loved you. So make sure you're living in love. Be seeking God's word. It is a breath of fresh air in a stagnant society. So live in love. We must grow in faith and understanding by reading diligently. Now, where are we in John 20? Let's have a look at verse 29. And this was with doubting Thomas. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We have not seen Jesus, but we believe. Blessed be and put your faith in him. Jesus is there for all of us. Now, in John 21 verse 15, this sequence here is when Jesus is speaking and he's asking Peter, do you love me? Think about this. Is Jesus speaking to you directly right now? For this had a profound effect on me when I read this. And all this began after. So, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now, we are the sheep. We are the flock. We need the Bible. We need to stay in it. We need to work together diligently 
in the body of Christ. We all have our part to play in it. But there is one head, and that is Jesus Christ. We all work together to build each other up, to grow in our understanding, in our learning and due diligence. Seeking the teachings of Jesus Christ and learning from them, obeying them. When you see all the things that Jesus taught us, and he taught us much, we should be listening and we should be following all he commanded. Now, John 8 verse 11, shall we go have a look? Let's go open up to John 8 and verse 11. Now, this was when the woman was, was brought to him to be condemned. And they were like, oh, this woman's an adulterer. And it was like, he who is without sin, cast first stone. Now look at verse 11. She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He said, sin no more, not go and sin a little bit here and there. Go, sin like normal. Go, enjoy the old sin. Sin no more. Those were Jesus' words. His words were exact. He preached for three years. Not one word that he spoke in this Bible is wasted. We should be listening. We should be learning. Growing in him. Learning from him. Abiding in him. I find the chapters of John 14, 15 and 16 very strengthening as you get to learn and understand the character of Jesus Christ, his example. Remember, in John 10, he is the good shepherd. Now, we know in 1 John, verses, verses 4 of chapter 3, that sin is lawlessness. And we know that he who practices sinning is practicing lawlessness. And we know in Hebrews 10.26 For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of truth there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins sinning deliberately. So strive and fight against sin. Don't let it entangle you. Free yourself from the world for sin is like tar. It will stick to you. You'll be covered in it and you won't be able to get it off being a slave to sin. But be washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. And you can see clearly. So that you are freed from sin and not stuck in it. Seek God with all due diligence. And then John 5.14 And this was when... Where are we? Let's go open to 5.14 Here we go. Now, do you remember when he healed the man at the pool? This is what this is about, but it's this specific verse I want you to hear. See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest you are a worse thing come upon you. So sin no more. And do you remember when Jesus spoke of when you were washed clean? The spirit leaves and then it goes, I will go back to my home and it will see it swept clean. And then it will go gather other spirits worse in itself to reside back. And that person will become worse than they were before. Think about that. Let's abide in Christ. Let's follow his example and his teachings. Let's grow from his loving example. I pray you've found this helpful and you're able to take this in today to help you grow in your understanding and your learning in your journey with God may you keep building your relationship with the Lord may you keep praying keep studying keep rejoicing and trusting in God keep on rejoicing in our Father in heaven God bless you all